Hey everybody, this is Brendan, and this is a new playlist on my channel called Isometric Game Art, and that's just it. Uh, I have some experience making uh, games in the isometric perspective, so I think that this is actually a really useful uh, way to create art if you are looking to uh, paint concept for games, especially things that happen to be you know MOBA or free to play or anything like that. Um, so this one is an art prompt that I got from one of my friends uh, who plays a lot of World of Warcraft, uh, and he uh, said, hey, why don't you do something kind of like uh, the Legion DLC, which is apparently a bunch of demons and demon hunters, and they have this thing called the Tomb of the Wardens, which basically is magical prisons, I guess, that uh, keep them captive. So uh, that's the theme that I went with, uh, as I just dug up some reference and uh, went in here. So what I'm going to be outlining first, uh, well, overall in my process, I'm actually going to be talking a little bit about the design uh, more than uh, I do otherwise. So my process for this, uh, and this is the end result here, we'll go back to the, uh, the drawing. Uh, but my process is to, well, one, gather reference, uh, anything and everything. And we have a lot of really awesome uh, concept art pieces and illustration, and there's just a ton of super talented artists over there at Blizzard. Uh, and then some screenshots, you know, of course, from the game. And uh, from that, I did some studies of everything, so basically some loose, ugly sketches to just, uh, you know, just get some of the, the language of the shapes down in my hand. Uh, and then after that, I synthesized together uh, all that uh, observational reference and sketching. I synthesized this, uh, or rather cobbled it together, uh, this uh, tomb, this, I guess, demon tomb. Uh, cool. So some things in here, I mean, you can see uh, this skull was, I thought it was really cool, so I thought I would make it like this big, like, T-shaped centerpiece. Uh, we have a lot of these verticals in here, these, like, spires and verticals, which are, you can see in the concept art, there's a lot of those, like, daggery type, uh, very tall, slender, uh, architecture here that I tried to use a lot of stone a lot of carved stone so keeping that in mind uh, and we have this cool jewel magical thing in the center which I pretty much just took this guy and stuck it in the center uh, and added a couple chains in here of course just to kind of keep in line with the idea that it's a prison or something so you know we can think of this as some sort of maybe sacrificial altar like you know you have to spill some blood here to free the, the demon inside or something like that uh, but just tried to keep it loose and fun and uh, again the the process is uh, reference observational studies and then synthesize it together um, cool so here's the uh, the first pass here and pretty much I mean you if you've seen my material study videos you'll know I have a very uh, similar process for this which is basically uh, let's go ahead and show the drawing here uh, we have the drawing uh, put the lines layer to multiply you know just like any other line drawing uh, and then so we're just basically blocking in the color. And these colors, you know, I, I chose this color palette by looking. I didn't really s uh, sample directly on any of this, but I just kind of eyeballed it and made some uh, swatches here. I really recommend uh, laying out your color palette and swatches beforehand. So again, it's just kind of like a good way to compartmentalize information. And really, that's what this whole process is about, is really, uh, you know, gathering reference, being like, okay, what is this art prompt or this uh, idea uh, based off of seeing what's out there as far as the art goes to make sure we're somewhat within the art style and then taking what we've learned from observing from sketching and putting it together synthesizing making it up uh, in our drawing for perspective and design and then again with this is just like isolating the color palette so really we're, we're doing a lot of steps before just diving into the painting so we can actually have a pretty good start and I made a few mistakes which we'll we'll see uh, a little bit later on which kind of come back to to haunt me a bit uh, but I, I think that that's the main thing with painting is just setting yourself up for success by uh, doing the beginning steps uh, diligently and not hurrying through that cool so here's a, pa a paint layer on top so we have the lines we do some base color some mid-tones the dark tones and you know starting to establish silhouette and everything and really I as of recently I've started doing this more where I take I just have a paint layer where it's a normal layer and I just block in uh, I block in painting uh, and we can see also in the lines layer 
there's this layer mask where I'm kind of erasing the lines as I go. I wasn't as diligent about that uh, with this painting, and you'll see in the time lapse that I, I spent a good amount of time blending out lines when I could have just uh, had this layer masking earlier. Uh, but I do recommend that because eventually you're going to want to take away those pencils uh, and paper texture for the most part, unless uh, you want it, if, if it's something that kind of adds to the quality of the piece at the end. But anyway, just do a little block in, uh, and I call this a block in paint uh, because it really gets, you know, a lot of the forms established, a lot of the local color. The lighting on this is pretty weak right now. It's not really lit well. So you're going to see me come in later and add a little bit of that lighting in there. Uh, adding some ground. They had this really fun cracked dirt. Uh, so I had a, uh, had a good time blocking that in with little cracks and everything like that. Um, and just some textural brushes on top. Any type of noise will do to get this spatter, but you can see kind of trying to reinforce this like spotlighting coming in uh, and there's some cast shadows. So as if that we have this light source that's just in this area to kind of illuminate the front of this, uh, that's where we get these cast shadows from. And we can see that the intensity of the light fades out soft here uh, and that just kind of helps to, to ground the form in. Some clouds. I just used a uh, I used a fog brush here. If you have a dust or cloud or fog brush, anything like that, uh, and you kind of brush it in on top, uh, you know, and you can even just like stipple or dot it in. What I do is I erase and I use a smudge brush and I just kind of wipe at it a little bit. Take the palette away here. Uh, I kind of take the uh, the smudge brush to just kind of soften up some of the edges, so we get this kind of sense of motion or movement. All right, it's usually about this time uh, that I, I realize, okay, I need to brighten my values. Uh, and, you know, with my value check layer on top here that I always have, this is a, an easy way to do that. So if we see what I'm doing here with my uh, brighten layer, is I'm just just bringing the, the mid-tones and the light tones out of it so it actually feels like there's a little bit of a light source in this so that it pops off the page, especially at the, uh, the small size here. Cool. And again, uh, this value check is really handy, colors distracting, so it's uh, it's good to have that there. I go I go into more of this in the material studies videos. Uh, shadow, so just kind of reinforcing some shadow, some lights, reinforcing the stuff I wanna I w want light to hit and where I want us to look. And I do this blur and sharpen thing. It doesn't add too much here. I probably could have gone without it, but basically just sharpening up the stuff in the center and blurring on the edge. Uh, using a little bit of filters. So this was session one uh, and I took three sessions or rather four including the drawing on this uh, and I would say the actual painting time on this is about four hours. I didn't record about half an hour out of it uh, towards the uh, the middle or the end part but that's all right. Uh, so about four hours of painting uh, and another like couple hours of like sketching and drawing on this so maybe about six hours total from start to finish. Uh, on this uh, on this piece uh, So session one cool things are good uh, overall where I felt at the end of the session uh, as You know, I, I took a step back uh, For the day and I said all right Well, let's let's see what we think when we come back and I think overall, you know again Here's a couple things that I noticed that were really uh, Starting to get in my way is that I didn't blend out the lines layer enough. So we have this like pencil -y, uh, I guess texturing it a little bit more than we want so it still feels like outlined or cartoonish in that regard which maybe that's okay but I, I didn't want quite so much as well when I took this on other monitors I noticed the values were super dark and on the monitor I'm on right now uh, it seems like the values are all right but I took it away and it was just overall really really dark and we're losing a lot of mid-tones uh, and then as well the perspective wasn't right so uh, I think there was a you know there there was some stuff here that I, I could clean up and polish uh, and fix. So session two, and this is the result of session two, so I'll go ahead and turn all that stuff off. First thing I did, you know, lighten the values up overall. I started to do a perspective fix on the base here. I have this isometric grid that I, I lay on top. And I actually, I recommend this for any perspective. I found this to be really handy. And every time I try and fake it, I just like, I don't do a good job. So I guess part of this series is going forward for me. I want to be more disciplined uh, because my drawing for this was a, a freehand 
uh, and I didn't take the time once I brought this drawing into Photoshop to fix the perspective in the drawing phase. And you're going to see that that causes me to do a few repaints here and there. And it's not the most efficient process, uh, what, I, what I did. So uh, learning lesson, be more disciplined about uh, adhering to the isometric grid or whatever perspective uh, you're going from. And you can find these grids online, either isometric grid, three-point grid, um, you know, uh, anything you need to kind of just overlay this this kind of perspective layer and it, it helps to have a cheap cheat because perspective again it's if you get it just a little bit off or things are a little bit inconsistent it really really like it shows and it makes it uh, makes the piece not look uh, believable cool so perspective fix I did a little bit again on the on the bottom on the base uh, but you'll see I go through and I do a lot more uh, fixing on the top part later uh, polish so this is basically again painting out those lines starting to paint in more stone and things like that just kind of getting an overall effect of just a more clean look uh, actually putting little islands a little like piece to have it you know on I, I felt it kind of helped to make this its own self-contained little scene to kind of put on this little rock island or something like that a um, little bit of light source so again just enhancing some of where the the light sources are uh, and giving the sky a little bit of cast light here and then adding a little bit of god rays coming through because why not just give it very moody you know i, I played uh, fallout 4 and this kind of reminds me of that the uh, the glowing sea that like radioactive area and i was really inspired by that uh in, in some of the uh, the concept arts here so um probably not completely on style for a uh, blizzard in fact it's definitely not it's not my forte is uh mimicking a blizzard's art style it's a pretty cool style and I, I could stand to try and work in it more and improve that but um, you know this is in the ballpark all right session three so this is you're gonna see I do a lot of perspective fixes in here I would say session three and that's the thing that I actually didn't record is the beginning part of this um, and it's basically just going through uh, and fixing perspective on everything to make it adhere a little bit more uh, so we can see with the grid on I can really crank the visibility up here on this is that here's before and we see this top part how if these are we're assuming this is symmetrical and I got some feedback from uh, an art buddy of mine AJ who was basically saying with the design of this altar that if it's asymmetrical cool but make it really asymmetrical if it's symmetrical as well awesome if that's your intent but really make it symmetrical and things like these points uh, you know there if we follow this line up here if they were equal heights you know this one is a little bit shorter the angles aren't matching here we have this kind of like drifting perspective that's a little bit inconsistent uh, on these areas so they're making different angles here where some might be a little bit sharper than others some might be shallower but there's no consistency here so I went back uh, and I took time to fix that and we can see once this snaps on here how we have much better at that I even flipped one of the arms here on that you see this uh, left arm here flip that to kind of be facing forward just like this one so uh, a lot more happy with that um, other than that and this perspective fix you can see I went through in like a number of layers here this is how much I was like okay you you can't finish this unless you uh, unless you actually fix the perspective on this so I'm just gonna activate these layers to kind of show you what I'm talking about here yeah so perspective fix hooray awesome now I get to polish the stone um, just to kind of examine it a little bit up close and you know one thing again um, <laughs> a disadvantage to what I did by skewing this is that I feel like this stone face just flattened out a little bit too much I tried to bring it back with the nose here and with this stone polish layer for the kind of define the material more but overall this face is a little bit flattened uh, you know again could have saved me a lot of headache if I would have been disciplined about my perspectives in the in the first place and, and not gone ahead and painted uh, so what else chains oh yes so something with this uh, is that right now I think this is uh, one of my friends said hey this looks like a chain brush uh, and it is you know it's a it's one of blurs good brush uh, that's in there you can make your own chain brush as well uh, but it's good for blocking in but you know you see these transitions here and this is where it tends to break down is right where the connectors are so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and redefine I'm just gonna paint in a little bit of highlight and really define the areas where it connects up and then I can fade it into the flat part here in the middle if I don't feel like painting that and I didn't 
Uh, but we see that even just that little bit here adds a bit more believability in here. And sure, I, I probably could have gone the extra mile with the chains and maybe uh, instead of using the cookie cutter um, brush out of here, done some chains more like this with these little points on the end. But uh, we'll call that good. Cool. The last part, the last part is just uh, doing a little bit of miscellaneous cleanup. You're always going to be spot checking at the end uh, with that. Um, that's about it. That wraps it up here. Uh, overall, though, I, I guess the biggest thing I would say that I learned out of this and for you guys going forward, if you're going to do isometric stuff, is um, have that isometric grid. Uh, do sketches. Uh, do sketches with the grid on and just get the feel of it. Uh, and then, you know, separate out before diving into the painting. You know, have a design phase. Uh, explore. Uh, find references. Do observational studies synthesize that exploration into your own kind of design or concept and really focus on the shapes and the perspective and don't don't uh, do anything else and then bring it in and uh, paint it afterwards and you're again you know we see some of the mistakes i made uh, in this process for this uh, and hopefully i'll try and be more disciplined in the future but uh, that's my advice as far as this so uh, if you have any questions or comments feel free to let me know below and thank you guys so much
Thank you.